aerobic regurgitation. Hello everyone, welcome to another video on cardiology. In this video, we're going to be talking about aortic regurgitation. Some of the most common causes of aortic regurgitation include an aortic root dilation, secondary to connective tissue disorders like Marfan syndrome and Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, and some of the infectious causes like syphilis. Congenital bicuspid aortic valve is a very common cause of aortic regurgitation. Bicuspid aortic valve is an autosomal dominant condition with incomplete penetrance, and a significant family history of cardiac deaths is a giveaway towards clinching the diagnosis. Younger patients can present with isolated aortic regurgitation due to valvular leaflet abnormalities or due to aortic root dilation, which can progress to formation of aneurysm and dissection, causing sudden cardiac deaths. In older patients, it causes aortic stenosis. It can also be seen with certain most inflammatory conditions like rheumatic heart disease and infective endocarditis. Due to insufficiency with aortic regurgitation, the backflow of the blood results in increased left ventricular and diastolic volume, which results in a compensatory myocardial hypertrophy and ventricular enlargement. This initially maintains the stroke volume and cardiac output, but the increase in the left ventricular size brings the ventricular apex close to the chest wall, causing a pounding sensation and an uncomfortable awareness of the heartbeat, especially in the left lateral decubitus position. Now, the excessive left ventricular stretching later on leads to decreased stroke volume, decreased forward blood flow and systolic heart failure. Now, the increased left ventricular and diastolic pressure is the one which results in pulmonary congestion and causes dyspnea. Patients present with signs and symptoms of heart failure like dyspnea on exertion, chest pain, syncope, so on and so forth. When aortic regurgitation is due to valvular disease, a decrescendo type of diastolic murmur best heard with the diaphragm of the stethoscope along the left sternal border at the third and the fourth intercostal spaces with the patient sitting up, leaning forwards and holding a breath in full expiration. But when it is due to aortic root disease, it is best heard along the right sternal border. Patients usually have a wide pulse pressure where there is an increased systolic blood pressure and a decreased diastolic blood pressure, thus contributing to a greater than 60 millimeters of mercury of pulse pressure. A collapsing or a water hammer pulse, otherwise called as a Corrigan's pulse, is a common finding in patients with aortic regurgitation, which is an abrupt upstroke followed by a rapid collapse of the peripheral pulse. The diagnosis of aortic regurgitation, and in general, most of the valvular heart diseases is made and confirmed with an echocardiography. And patients with symptomatic, severe type aortic regurgitation should be referred for aortic valve replacement. 